Today we're talking all things VO2 max. My name is Devlin Eden from coachparry.com. We often get the question, how do we measure our VO2 max? How important is VO2 max? How accurate is VO2 max on my training device? All of these are things that we're going to dive into in a little bit more detail in this particular video. Let's get started off with figuring out what exactly is VO2 max. VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that your body can use to produce the energy that allows your muscles to contract. It is measured in an absolute terms as liters per minute and then expressed as milliliters per kilogram of body mass per minute so that we can compare individuals and make it specific to you. But essentially when we are training, what we are trying to do is we're trying to improve your body's ability to use oxygen because by providing that energy through pathways that use oxygen, we produce far less byproducts of energy metabolism. It's much more efficient and it's the type of exercise that you can continue doing for long periods of time. As soon as we start moving into energy pathways that can be done without using oxygen, that generally means that the end of exercise is near. So therefore, the higher we can push up your VO2 max and the more efficient we can make your body at using oxygen to produce energy, the better you can perform at below max or sub-maximal exercise levels. Now that we know what VO2 max is, we're getting a lot of questions lately around your wearable device and how accurate that VO2 max reading is. There's actually a really cool study that's, uh, that's been done around measuring the accuracy of, of the VO2 max from your wearable device. And if you didn't know this already, there are, there are essentially two ways that these wearables can work out your VO2 max. One is by using the data that is received from your training, from your exercises, and one is from the data that it's receiving in a rested state. So when you're just resting and not doing anything. And this paper showed that really the, the, the one that is most accurate of those two is the data that is received from your exercise, okay? But overall, it still does not give a really good reading or, or idea of your VO2 max. That estimation error, because really it's an estimation just based on algorithms, is still really, really high when compared to doing a direct measure of VO2 max. So this is really an indication. Do not read a lot into it because there is a lot of error that is picked up between working out your VO2 max in a scientific way or taking it as a measure on your watch. So following on from that then, so yes, the watches aren't exactly accurate. It's just giving you a snap shot of, of your VO2 max, all right? So how do we really measure VO2 max? That is done in a laboratory setting by what we call a breath by breath analysis or analyzer. So you're wearing a mask and you're running on a treadmill and that can be done in, a, there's a couple of different types of ways that we do that, whether on a ramp protocol or a step test. And, and from there, we're then measuring a number of different things. And in particular, we're measure, having a breath by breath analysis. So we're really looking at the relationship between how much oxygen is going, um, going in and how much carbon dioxide is coming out. And that gives us an idea of our VO2 max. If you really are interested in, in looking at your VO2 max and what that number is, I would really recommend going into getting that test done in a laboratory setting. Now that you know what it is and how to test it, how do you improve it? In the scientific literature, there are two theories about how to improve VO2 max. That is part of what really complicates this whole process in terms of what is better because in the literature they have shown that by doing repeated high intensity workouts with longer rests you can improve VO2 max. But what we also know from those studies that when they are combined with a performance test, for example, a 5K or 10K time trial, that those improvements in your body's ability to utilize oxygen at maximum don't necessarily translate into improvements in performance over 5 and 10Ks in highly trained individuals. Let's take a look at how you'd work to improve VO2 max in training. So in order to improve your VO2 max, you want to work at intensities around 95% or 100% of VO2 max. This is a very, very high intensity, and for, well, for elite athletes, it corresponds to about two mile race pace to 5K race pace, but it's not about the pace, it's about the intensity that you're training at. So the, the best way to look at this is that you want to accumulate time at VO2 max. 
So short intervals aren't going to be very useful because you're going to spend a very short time at VO2 max and you stop and recover and then you start again. And that recovery time actually brings down the intensity for a little bit. But if you do intervals that are way too long, which are over five minutes, you're going to find yourself working too hard and you're going to have to cut the session short. Generally, the best block of time to work on is intervals that are two minutes long to about five minutes long. Two minutes allows you, your body to ramp up properly and get the right intensity. And even when you do take recovery time, you're not going to recover completely. And then as you go through the set, you will build up to the right intensity. Two minutes is a very, very short time. And at that, at the shorter end, you want to run more towards 100% of VO2 max. And for the five minute intervals, you want to be running close to about 95 VO2 max. But remember, the pace is not important and it's about maintaining the right intensity throughout the session. So after you've done um, a high intensity interval, you want to add in a recovery interval. And the recovery intervals allow you to basically accumulate work at this intensity. If you were to just go out and do a continuous run at VO2, at VO2 max, Okay, you'd last eight minutes and that's not a very efficient way of doing the training so you always follow a high intensity interval bout with a recovery bout the recovery bouts are generally about 50 percent to 100 percent of the total time that you took so if you did a five minute interval your recovery time would be two and a half minutes to about five minutes what you do in that recovery interval is not so important it's just about bringing your heart rate down with the intensity down active recovery usually works best and this is basically a slow jog or even walking but for some people, standing rest is the best way to do it. It all depends on how hard you've worked and how well you recover. So for the most part, you don't want your VO2 max workouts to, to be too much of your weekly volume. It's about 8% of your weekly volume, no more than about 10 kilometers for the faster runners and about 5Ks for uh, recreational runners and no more than 30 minutes of work during a session. On the other side, where we've got a more polarized approach to it, where there's lots of training that is done at a low intensity with some training at a very high intensity. We see similar improvements in VO2 max, but very importantly, we see much bigger improvements over five and 10K time trial. And of course, we are training primarily for an endurance sport and for performance in a five and a 10 and a 21 and, and so on. What that leads us to conclude is that while VO2 max is an important number and it's important that the body can utilize oxygen to produce energy, that it's much more important at sub-maximal levels. In other words, what we are doing is we are improving the body's efficiency at processing and using oxygen and that is done much better by using a polarized approach to training. What that means is that we do the majority of our training at lower intensities, as low as 80% of threshold or 70% of max. And what that allows the body to do is to produce more mitochondria in the cells. Those are the little coal powered stations which actually allow the body to produce the spark that allows for muscle contraction. We have more mitochondria, the body can utilize more oxygen. So we wanna do the majority of our training at lower intensities, and then we wanna do some sessions, roughly 15 to 20% of our total training volume at high intensity. And the combination of that's going to give you the best improvements in VO2 max, but much more importantly, it's gonna give you the best improvement at utilizing oxygen at sub-maximal intensities and that's going to improve your running over a wide variety of distances from five kilometers all the way to ultra running. So now we know all things VO2 max, we know how to implement it, we know what we should be looking for. You can go out there and make this work for you. If you want to find out the six most important metrics that we here at Coach Perry think every runner should be tracking, check out the video on screen now. If you enjoyed this video and got a bit of value out of it, hit the like button. Please don't forget to hit our subscribe button so that you can not miss out on any of our future content.